With a regular hang tan, I'm normally pretty insistent that both feet have to be perfectly next to each other, facing straight forward about halfway along the length of the nose. Now obviously that foot position isn't going to get you onto one wheel, so you have to change your stance quite considerably. You want to start by putting your back foot over the front toe side wheel, so that the ball of the foot is right on the edge of the deck there. Obviously that's not going to let you get into a nose wheelie very easily, so your front foot's then going to have to go alongside it on the nose. This stance will leave you facing roughly 35 to 45 degrees instead of straight forward as with a regular hang 10. But this is the correct stance, it's the only way you're going to get it up onto one wheel. Believe me, the purist in me would love to do this from a regular forward facing kind of classical hang 10 position. But it just really doesn't work, you don't have the leverage to get that board up onto one wheel. If you try shifting your weight to one side, the best thing that will happen is you'll turn slightly. You just won't be able to push the board up that way. So you're going to have to go for this strange, kind of slightly angled stance. I don't normally recommend doing this, but with this trick, you're going to need to get your head around it stationary first. You're not going to be able to balance it without rolling, but you need to understand what your feet are doing before you start rolling. In reality, this is a two-step process. Once you've got your feet in the right position, you need to do the movement with your back foot first, followed by your front foot. Your back foot basically is going to push onto the toes. It should feel like the ball of your foot is pressing into the side of the deck. That will help you lift up the heel side wheel. Once you can do that, then it's a case of shifting your weight slightly to the front leg to lift up the back wheels. Now, when you do the trick, you're basically doing those two movements one after the other. But the key is to make the gap between them short enough that it looks smooth. Now even though you're working this out stationary, don't then be tempted to do this really slowly. The slower you are, the harder this becomes. If I take a push and just roll that short distance, I'm not going to be able to hold this and I'm going to fall off forwards. I know it. <laughs> it should be a given that you shouldn't be learning this trick if you can't already do regular hang tens. But if, like me, you're very comfortable with a regular two-foot nose wheelie or hang tan, this is going to feel very strange. To me, a hang tan feels like the most comfortable position in the world. You just stand facing forwards and you counterbalance using your hips and knees. Keep your shoulders in line and just let your hips and knees do all the work. When you're trying to do this on one wheel, you don't really have that flexibility. Because of the position you're in, you know, relative to the balance point, you have to shimmy your hips out forwards. You have to kind of end up in this weird curved position where it feels a lot of the time like you're barely hanging on. If you're used to G-turns, this might feel kind of familiar, but it's really something very unique to this trick. You won't pick it up quickly, and it will probably always feel a little bit strange, but it's quite fun to do. Now the downside to this, because of the fact, as I say, you feel like you're hanging off the front of the board. When you come down, when the back wheels touch, you very quickly got to shift back. That's the only way you're going to roll away from this cleanly. So get used to coming from this position, kind of angled out the front, and snapping backwards to get all four wheels back down and to roll away safely. So once you've got your head around this stationary, it's time to roll. And this trick's going to need a lot of speed, a lot of space and a lot of time. Getting into position for this is awkward enough, but then you need a lot of speed to be able to hold it, which then translates to needing a lot of space. That's why I've come up here, where there's loads of room. This isn't the sort of thing you can practice in your backyard. Get out, find some space, and just go for it. Remember the basic motion. Push forward on your back foot first, just tipping the weight into the ball of the foot, and then switch your weight forwards, just slightly. You don't need to be too heavy. This is very much a confidence trick. Go fast, believe in yourself, and just go for it. It's so much fun, but you need to believe that you can do it, and don't be scared of it.
So just like with any wheelie, it helps to have little goals, incremental marks that you can use to measure your progress. If you go back and watch the trick tip that I did for the regular tail wheelie, you'll notice I did the same thing, same with the original Hang 10. The difference is that this is an awkward trick to hold, it's quite uncomfortable. So the chance of being able to cover you know, entire car parks or parking lots in one wheelie is slim. If I can fill this whole frame with one long one wheeler, I'd be amazed. But having these little marks to guide your progress, to gauge how far you're going, that helps just psychologically. So find something like this and give it a try. Most wheelie tricks can be done pretty much on any board with some adjustments. One wheelers of all kinds, a little bit more picky about your setup. And I think this one in particular can be a real arse if your board isn't set up just right. As such, this is my board for this year. It's pretty much the same as most of my setups over the last couple of years. It's my Pro model, seismic focus wheels. These are the 95A ones I did a video on a while back. But as I mentioned a couple of videos ago, I swapped the film trucks. I've also gone back to using big six mil risers. Now, this isn't the only reason I've gone to taller trucks, but it's certainly a big part of it. In comparison, if we look at the board I was using last year, same board, same wheels. Well, these are tracker full tracks. Full tracks are a very low truck. I've also got much lower rises in there. What this translates to is that it's very difficult to do one wheelers without getting serious wheel burn. The, the wheel just hits the board and either stops dead or just burns into it and slows you down. Genuinely didn't fake that for the camera. That's, that's legitimate wheel bite. Just cleaned off the edge of my wheel. That was fun. The other thing to bear in mind is that most freestylers like to have really, really stiff trucks. Now, if you are like me and you like to actually carve, you like to turn away from tricks, you don't need to weld your truck shut. You don't need 101A super rock hard bushings. I tend to use 95A tracker super balls. I really like the way they turn. But that leaves me with a bit of give on there. So I need taller trucks to compensate. If you do like to have your trucks so stiff they don't move, you can probably still ride full tracks and do this trick just fine. One thing is a given though, you're not gonna be able to do this on stock bushings no matter what the truck is. Throw the stocks away, upgrade to at least a 94 or 95A bushing before you even think about getting onto one wheel. Now the last board that I've got here to talk about is this. It's my prototype single kick which I'd still drag out every so often and I love it. Now, if you're gonna do this on a single kick, play around with both ends of the board. When you're using the flat nose, I think it feels really nice, but because of the fact it goes down lower, there's more chance of your nose scraping off the floor. So you might wanna flip the board round just to give yourself that little bit more clearance as you lift up the back wheels. One last thought on this trick. If you are like me and you do like a looser board, you like something that actually turns, it can be difficult to tell when this wheel lifts off the ground. It's all too easy when you don't know how this should feel to really just be leaning the truck and not really getting that off the ground enough. And you can't see it either. You're gonna be facing that direction. This is in your blind spot. If you're turning around trying to look at it, you're throwing your posture off. You're gonna lose your balance and you're gonna lose the trick. So it helps when you're learning this to have a spotter with you, a friend, you know, someone whose opinion you trust and value. Basically just to sit at the side and just watch this wheel. Someone who'll tell you from the sidelines, yeah, that's not up enough. Yeah, that looks great. No, that's not actually leaving the floor. It's all too easy to do these badly, to be sloppy with it. And don't accept that. Have someone on the sideline who's willing to shout at you when you do it wrong because done well this trick is brilliant so don't half arse it and if that means you need to enlist someone else so be it